Hi guys, it's Hatch Someone How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope, if you haven't guessed from the title, I'm doing another spotlight video today. And today it is Moth and Rabbit Perfumes. This company caught my attention in April this year when it was the, let me get this right, Exonce, Esconce, Essence, whatever that festival is in Milan that happens every year, it's the biggest kind of perfume expo that happens. I am planning to go next year, so I'll keep you posted. Fingers crossed I can go and film it and everything. Um, but every time it happens, I look at the companies that are gonna be showcasing their perfumes there, just to see if there's any cool, new and interesting brands. And the name of this one obviously got my attention, Moth and Rabbit. I, I thought, okay, that's cool. I wanna know more about them, so then I delved a bit further. Looked, started looking at their perfumes, started looking at the note lists, and I was really intrigued. So then my cheeky little self reached out to them and said, hey guys, really liked your, um, the look of your brand and everything, could I possibly try some samples? And they were really cool, and they said, yes, we can send you some, but they didn't send me samples. They sent me this whole box of 12 mil sprayers. So, yeah, that was very surprising. So thank you guys, whoever you are, which leads me on to say, this is a spotlight and I like to do it a little bit more in depth about the company. I haven't been able to find much out about this company in general. I know they are a young company. They were founded in 2016, but all of the fragrances only launched this year. So they're a baby company, they're brand new. So why not give them attention? So yeah. The perfume behind all of the perfumes in this brand, of this brand, is Mark Buxton. He is quite a prolific perfumer. He has his own brand and he's worked with many, 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 many companies. And they have 12 perfumes all together, but they, and they sent me seven. So yeah, let's just start with that. So the more I looked into it, I realized that all of their fragrances are named after movies, films, None of which I've heard of, apart from one, which is Clueless, the famous 90s film with the blonde girl whose name totally escapes me right now. She's the girl that plays the roller girl in Dirk Dinkley? Dirk Digley? <laughs> obviously, I'm not, obviously my brain is not working today. I've just finished work, so I'm a little bit overloaded with everything right now. What's her damn name? I don't know, anyway. But they're all named after films. I've never heard of any of them before. And when I started reading the descriptions and the notes, my intrigue level was just really raised. So I wanted to smell them and I've got them. So I'm gonna talk about them. I have smelled all of them individually on card mm, three weeks ago. And then over the last two weeks on my days off, I've done skin tests of them as well. But before I start, let me just show you how the first plus I'm going to say about this company is that these sprayers are absolutely beautiful. The quality, they're really cool. <laughs> it's going so well. Oh my gosh, there's fireworks going off outside. Somebody's paying a didgeridoo. Never move to London. Never move to London. It's too eventful. Look at this though. They spray this beautiful amount of perfume in this really fine mist and that is what I want from a perfume sprayer. So the quality is great. So they sell these 12 mil sprayer perfumes. They are 39 euros and then they sell 50 mil like full bottles and they're 135 euros. Please equate that to your currency in your country. Also, these guys are from Germany. I have never done a spotlight on a German company before. They are from Berlin. And fun fact, in the top five countries in the world that I'm viewed in, Germany is number four. So, guten tag, wie geht's? Merkst du mit mir ins Kino gehen? Ja? How about that? So anyway, let's just dive in because I have them. There are seven. I'm gonna have to reference my phone because the films I literally, <laughs> I've never seen. So we're gonna start with whatever one I pull out. And this one's called The Lobster. Never seen the film. 
Apparently this is a film, I've read about this one, it's got Colin Farrell in it and it's a dystopian future film where you can be turned into an animal or something like that. Sounds very weird. These are all on my IMDb to watch list now, so we'll see. But yeah, I haven't been able to find much out about who the owners are or anything like that. It's a bit of a mystery, so not a very good spotlight so far, but I'm here to talk to you about the perfume. So the notes, I'm going to read you the notes of all of them because that's what really drew me in. This one, he says, uh, the cinematography inspired me to render a scenery, landscape and feeling of a couple in a forest, a location where two people fall in love, coldness, wind, damp wood, lake and forest leaves. Uh, animal and bloody undertones, he says. Mark Buxton, this is, by the way. And bouquet of wildflowers to represent the society they left. I have never seen it. Anyway, the notes are green notes, uh, Muguet du Bois Cypriol. Muguet, I know, is Lily of the Valley. Cypriol, I know, is a plant that's related to uh, juniper. It's also known as Nagamotha. Then you've got leafy notes, cold water, cedarwood, myrrh. Arnica, I don't know what that is, <clears throat> fenugreek, animal notes, smell of hummus, and then the one that makes me laugh the most is moos, as in the sound a cow makes, moos. So this one is the forest vibe. A couple of these, I'm going to admit, a couple of these when I tried them over the week, when it came to trying to remember what they smelled like, a few of them bled into each other and a couple of them got lost and then there's a few that stand out. This one is the one to me that smells like frankincense resin. It's very coniferous, it's very green. It's a little bit damp and earthy. And as I remember, this one dried down to kind of, uh, it was like a minty, a very smooth minty feeling. One thing to note about this one is I, I, there's no animalic thing here. There is no blood. Um, and I will say at the beginning of this video that one of the negatives of this brand is that a lot of the fantasy accords that attracted me to them in the first place don't really translate and it's such a shame. I was hoping for the note lists to jump off of the page, or shall we say the card, or my skin, a lot more, and they kind of don't. However, there, there are some that are really cool, but we'll go through as we go through. But yeah, this one is coniferous, it's a little bit dank, earthy, raindroppy, and none of them also are explosive. I'll start with that too. So yeah, it feels a little bit spicy, and none of the notes that I read jump out, but it does feel definitely foresty. It's kind of calming because it feels like rainy day outside kind of smell. There's something else I'd like to note about this, uh, these lovely 12 more sprayers. They have the name at the back, so you have to roll it to read. And it's got on it, which is something else I can't find anything else out about, it's got times. So this one has got 20 minutes, 36 seconds to 24 minutes, and then one hour 32 to one hour 37. So I'm guessing my own interpretation of that is these are moments in the movies that these fragrances are based around. I haven't been able to find out much more about that. I guess I could have emailed the brand, but I didn't. So the next one is called La Haine. And this one is a film that came out in the 90s and it's about uh, the French suburbs and it's about a riot and three main characters. So Mark Buxton says, a calm yet confrontational scent that traces your neck like a sharp, cold blade with butchu sulphur. There's a feeling that something's gonna happen with burnt rubber, cold cedar notes creating a concrete effect combined with birch tar leather and bay oil. Dying out on a cold, damp smeller damp cellar smell with cedar, atlas, dark musk, and mosk, mosk, moss. Wow. So it says cold aldehydes, butchu sulfur, metallic bloody notes, rum aroma, bay, nutmeg, cardamom, leather, cold cedar, birch tar, burnt rubber, cedar, atlas, dark musk, and moss. Now this one is 
In any fragrance that I've ever smelled that contains birch tar, it's always the star of the show. I worked with birch tar when I did my perfume course because I wanted it to add a smoky touch to my fragrance and I realised that I had to dilute it to pretty much 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 for it to not take over. And it's the main star of the show in here. So birch tar smells like bonfire. It smells like fire smoke, campfire, and that's what I get from this. A lot of cedar wood as well. So it's a dry, woody, smoky fragrance. And you definitely smell that burnt rubber thing. If you've ever smelled a car when it's skidded, or if you've ever been a kid and ridden a bike and you do a big skid on your bike, it smells like that. So it's bonfire, burnt rubber, and cedar wood. But again, even though birch tar is a very crazy note, it's still relatively subdued. Like I said, none of their fragrances burst out at you. Nothing is assaulting on the nose. So they smell niche, they smell kind of cool, but none of them are aggressive. That's the entire feeling of them. They feel like they're at a medium level where you're not gonna get assaulted in your olfactory brain space. I remember this one on my skin, and this one lasted really long actually. It lasted pretty much a whole day when I went to work. I wore this underneath my shirt on my arm, and it really ended on that tar burnt rubber thing. So it's woodier at first, but then it goes to that afterwards. So let's move on to the next one. Why am I putting the card back in there? So the next one is Mood Indigo. This is a film that I actually want to watch after reading about it. It's a love story between a wealthy bachelor and a lady he falls in love with who is diagnosed with a disease who has, she has a flower growing in her lungs. That's kind of scary, but really poetic and beautiful as well. So I really want to try it. Now I've got the times, I should maybe have a look. So let's read what Mark Buxton says about this one while this is drying. So this one says, uh, it's a jazz film. He likes the ambience of it. Uh, flowers play a strong role in it, Water Lily. The film which starts gay and luminous becomes very dark. It's based on a dark woody notes with a lot of incense, incense which represents the jazz music. So it's red pepper, chamomile, geranium, water lily, musk, sandalwood, incense, amber, cedarwood and patchouli. And as much as I loved the idea of this movie, this to me was a very simple, it was probably the most simple of the, the seven that I've tried. And it's basically like a, a peppery incense. It smells like frankincense resin, it's a little bit coniferous, that green thing that happens with frankincense, but this one got a little bit lost on me. It was too simple and I liked the, the whole idea, but this to me was just pepper and a very pure green coniferous frankincense. It reminded me of Oliban by Fedon, if you ever smelled that before. A very woody, simple frankincense, so we're going to move on from that one. So the next one's called Blow Up, and this is another one that I really want to watch. It's about a photographer that's doing his thing and he happens to capture a photograph of a murder taking place or something like that. He gets involved in a murder. So let's spray this on and I will read what Mark Buxton says. This is, I'm saving like my favorite ones and towards the end. So this one was supposed to represent um, repeating textures of photographers, car, loft, antiques, chemicals in the dark room, dusty feathers, green leaves in the park because the photograph that he takes takes place in a park and the murder I think takes place in a park. I could be getting this all wrong but I've read tiny bits about it. I can't research films as well as fragrances, that would be way too much. He says marijuana as well, random. Anyway, so the notes are absinthe, saffron, cardamom, cassis, bourgeons, I don't know what that is, oil paint, cedar leaf, myrrh, cypriol, incense, Pyrogene, Chinese cedarwood, labdanum, leather, woody notes, civet, absolute, and amber. So this one, to me, feels like 
it feels like it has a little bit of what was going on in the burnt rubber thing. It has that dark woody element. I've dropped it again. That is the 20th thing I've dropped today. Today's a day of droppage. Multiple droppage all day long. But this feels to me like it has some kind of light floral element over the top and it feels like a purple floral. It feels like it's violety maybe, iris, but dark. Not iris, sorry, more violety. And it feels kind of dark. It's got that incense thing as well, which is in the other one that I said was kind of cedarwood. The names and stuff really blur into my brain. But this was one of the ones that <clears throat> I preferred but it kind of bled into one of the others so yeah this feels like a few elements from the one that had the burnt rubber and a few elements from the one that was the cedarwood foresty uh, incense one so it's like both of those together which is why it's my favorite because it, it feels more layered so we're gonna move on to my favorite three now these are my top three from the seven that I've tried it's called Single Man, and I've forgotten about this film. I think this was one about a politician. I think it's an LGBT film, actually. Let me just quickly look so I don't keep you waiting. Yes, so this is an English professor. One year after the sudden death of his boyfriend is unable to cope with his typical days in the 1960s. So I want to watch that one too. It's got Colin Firth in it. It's got Julianne Moore in it. It's got some peeps in it. But more importantly, what do they say about it? So, Mark Buxton says, it is a fragrance based on a variety of woody notes such as violet wood, cashmere wood, mahogany, and cider wood. Is that meant to be cedar wood? I don't know. That reflects the man who constructs or reconstructs a personality to bear the weight of loss and whom society will not permit to grieve. Note, cardamom, ginger oil, red pepper, winter lemon oil, nutmeg, rose, elemi oil, violet wood, cashmere wood, oak moss, amber, patchouli, mahogany, and cider wood. What is cider wood? Strangely enough, I like the way this one smells more in the air. I'm going to spray it again, actually. Just one more time. Look how that went straight in my wine. I really like the way this one smells. This one is a woody fragrance, of course, there's about 25 million woods in there, but this one to me feels the most high-end. I don't know, that sounds really conceited, I guess, but this one is the one that sparked me when I smelled it. A lot of the other ones <clears throat> kind of, they were, they were like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. A, a lot of the things were missing, a lot of the accords that they mentioned didn't jump out, there was not much fantasy going on, but this one is one that I feel is more interesting on a different level from all of the others. I can really feel patchouli, it feels like there's rose in here. It actually reminds me a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao. I'm not saying by any means it's a dupe, it's not the same in that way, but the patchouli here gives me that kind of rich, dark elegance. This one, I love the way it wafted. I love this one. I can't wait to wear this one more. So it's a mixture of woods with a leafy patchouli. And it feels a little bit gothic. I'm not sure how that relates to the film at all. I've not seen the film. I don't know why it would be like that. I will watch the films, but right now, this one to me is the most interesting of the five that I've smelled. So four that I've smelled, because we have five, six and seven. So the next two are my two favorites. So we're going to my second favorite. This one I consider to be the fun one of the bunch. It's called Dolls. And um, this is one of those crazy 80s films where, you know, people break down in a unknown place, run out of petrol, go to some creepy mansion and then uh, loads of crazy dolls come alive and I guess kill them. I haven't watched it, but I'm gonna watch it because I love 80s films. So this is definitely the most fun of the whole bunch here. So let me just quickly get a little uh, note list. This one also had the most disconnected description for me. 
uh, from Mark Buxton, the perfumer himself. It says a fragrance carried by vivid, extravagant colours and an I irrealistic story about uncom uncompromising love, all-consuming and bordering insanity. That's fine. And this is the bit I don't really understand. A heavy perfume based on animalistic notes interrupted by the subtle and light smell of snow. So repulsive in smell, so attractive in colours, so irreal. What do that mean? So this is the one where I was thinking, this sounds obviously really cool, it's called Dolls. It's got Cherry Blossom, uh, Geranium, Divana, Orange Blossom, Ylang Ylang, Apple Blossom, Rose Oil, Sweet Maple Accord, Musk, Snowflake Accord, Ambergris, Cedarwood and Animalic Notes. So, as much as I think this smells really, really cool, so much is lost. There is zero Animalic to speak of. Snow, that's open to interpretation. You know, you'd think it would be icy, cold, something that kind of hits your nose a little bit weird. This is all about fun. This is all about what they did land on properly is doll heads. This smells like doll heads. It smells a little bit plasticky. It's very smooth. It smells like a sweet cherry, almost bubblegum kind of smell. So it's really fun. It's not something I would ever wear but I feel like this one hits the description in terms of the dolls. It doesn't really fit the note list or what Mark Buxton said about it. But if you're expecting what he said, a heavy perfume with animalistic notes, that it is not. It's definitely not that at all. It's fun, flirty, like candy floss. It's their gourmand, I guess. I haven't smelled clueless, so I don't know. But. This one's really lovely. It's kind of juvenile, fun, sweet, innocent, like this. So we're going on to my favourite one. This is my favourite one. This is the one that stands out the most to me. It's called Duke of Burgundy. This one's another LGBT film. I believe it's something about lesbians. So it's about a lady who studies butterflies and moths and a love affair she has with another lady. So this one stuck out a mile to me. Uh, he said, I wanted to get the sensuality of the film in this fragrance, very feminine orientated. The idea was to get this soft, sensual odour, musky, clean, slight touch of shoe polish. Uh, there's something fruity that gives the scent a sensual, warm sex feeling. Lingerie, underwear, silky, cool and smooth. So this, is ha this has uh, angelique root, peach, green notes, freesia, divana, osmanthus, I don't know what that says. Hot, soft skin, shoe polish, soft animal notes, musk, heliotrope, cedarwood, virginie, sandalwood, and amber. Anyway, this is my interpretation. This is my favourite. This is the one that I'm going to spray on my skin right now again. Look at this. It's so good. So this one is the best. This one gives me kind of... It's a leather, basically. It gives me a little bit like vintage Chanel Kier de Rossi vibes. This is something that uses iris or oris root to create that suede, gorgeous, almost animalic, uh, almost humanistic, but very sensual leather, musky smell. It's really pretty. This one smells more refined than any of the others and that's why I love it. There's something a tiny bit herbal about it, but this really focuses on leather and, but an iris leather, not a shoe polish thing that they say, not shoe leather, not leather jacket, not car. It's not a harsh leather thing. It's very, very, very soft. It's really elegant. It smells really expensive, this one. I love it. So. If you, if you are a fan of Chanel's Kier de Rossi, you know that kind of elegant, soft, come hither, body, musk, leather kind of smell. This is the one. It's so good. This one is the complete standout. I would love to smell Clueless because even though it sounds like it's a fun one, I probably won't wear it, I wouldn't wear it, but Duke of Burgundy to me is amazing. So that's the seven that I received. So to sum up Moth and Rabbit perfumes, 
I'm sad that I don't know too much more about them. I could have probably asked more from the company, but I didn't. I was too focused on, give me the smells, give me the perfumes. Some of the negatives are, I wish that the Fantasy Accords had prevailed more in their fragrances. I wish I could have smelled snow and animalistic notes and the things that were promised. One of the plus sides is the packaging, the way it sprays, and the longevity is pretty good as well on these guys. But it sprays a light mist onto your skin, but um, if you wear, you know, a good couple of sprays, then you're gonna get good longevity. I get eight to 10 hours out of all of them, which is really cool. Some longer than others. The one with the tar lasted way longer than a lot of the others. But um, it's a good concept. It's a good thing creating fragrances based on movies. I wish I'd seen more of them because I probably could have been a bit more immersed in it. But for me, Duke of Burgundy, single man, and just for the pure fun aspect, dolls, because it's got that doll head, plastic kind of thing that I expect from something called dolls. They're the standouts for me. The others, interchangeable. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I've had so much fun smelling them and thank you so much Moth and Rabbit for sending me these because I was very intrigued so I'm glad I'm now not intrigued anymore. I smelled them and I like a lot of them so I'll speak to you guys soon. I'm out on my own, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. Goodbye.